Hi everyone, sorry I'm late. It is 4.32, Mark, I'm sorry. I was trying to figure out uh, a dress to wear my to my daughter's wedding and I cut, uh, lost track of the time. Hi everybody, we're gonna be just chatting with Mark Hyman about how to continue eating healthy. Um, and he's gonna be joining us momentarily. Anyway, I'm really sorry, I'm a little bit late. Um, you guys, please send me your, your uh, questions. I know we've been gathering them from uh, social media. And let me just see if Mark is here. Here he is. I think I this. Uh, I'm back in New York City. Really happy to be home. Although um, I miss Los Angeles. I have to say it was incredible being in California during this time. Uh, hi, Jennifer Fisher. Anyway, hi, Mark. Sorry. To hi. No, I no, was, no worries. No worries. <laughs> about, you know, Ellie, Ellie, my daughter, is getting married on uh, yeah. the 4th of July, and I'm trying to figure out uh, what to wear to her wedding, and I got well, him. Hopefully, hopefully now you need a new dress oh. after being on the vegan diet, right? You need a new dress because you're skinny. <laughs> well, listen, I want to say I feel so much better. I did it for 21 days. Everyone who follows me knows that I did fall off the wagon one day because it was our last day in LA, Mark. I really wanted to try these sidecar donuts. And I know that's oh. not <laughs> oh, but honestly. How do you feel? Were they good? I want to talk to you about this because. Did they bring you joy? Did they bring you joy? <laughs> Mark. And the, anyway. Uh, they did so, or they didn't? They didn't? Uh, it's delicious. And I just want to encourage people. <clears throat> I've been eating really healthy, and I do feel much better, and I want to talk to you about all that, but once in a while, you can kind of slip up and and kind of, I mean, I, I went a little crazy that one day, and now I'm back to eating healthy again. <clears throat> That's right. That's good. You don't have to be perfect. That's the whole point. You just have to, don't have to be perfect. I mean, you should give yourself a little window where you really see what it feels like when you change your diet and how well you can feel and all the symptoms that you go around with when you feel like crap that you don't have to have. But you, once you sort of understand that, then you get to play around a little bit and, and not be so restrictive. And that's the whole idea of the vegan diet. It's kind of inclusive. There's even a section there on how to treat sugar as a recreational drug. So it's okay. It's okay occasionally. Uh, I, I, was, <clears throat> I, I, I was definitely high on sidecar donuts. And um, <laughs> anyway, I, I, did, I enjoyed them. <clears throat> back to healthy eating because a lot of people went on the Pegan plan with me. I was so excited to share it with my followers. Mm. I have to say I've been feeling I've been feeling a lot better. My joints are less achy. Um, and I just have in general had more energy. And so um, but but this is the question mark. After the 21 day reset, um, I, I would love to know. My audio is breaking up. I'm so sorry. Is it? Can you hear me? Okay. I can, I can hear you perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, For me, you I, might have the waves in the background making a lot of noise. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think. I'll show you. I'm like sitting on my deck, but it's pretty. It's pretty nice out here. Up. Oh wow. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Oh, I think I lost, someone asked, I think I lost it between five and 10 pounds uh, uh, on this vegan reset. And I wanted to help people understand <clears throat> after the reset, uh, how they could start incorporating more foods and the foods that you don't think we should incorporate. So why don't yeah. you tell us about that? Well, first of all, I I'm so glad you lost the weight, but that's not the point of the whole plan. The plan is to create health. And when you create right. health, you lose weight automatically and all these other symptoms go away, right? Your joint pains, fatigue, energy, whatever, you know, I would like curious of what you noticed and everybody walks around with this, what I call FLC syndrome where they feel like crap and they don't connect the dots between what they're eating and how they feel. And it could be headaches, digestive issues, joint pain, fatigue, sleep issues, whatever. And, and the beauty of the reset is it sort of gets you back to your original factory settings. So the goal is when you reintroduce food, how do you do it in a way where you can actually recognize what's helping you or hurting you? So for example, <clears throat> maybe you're not reactive to gluten. Okay, well, so you ate the donuts. Did you get joint pain? Did you feel fatigued? Did you have a headache? What happened? Did your digestion hurt? Or were you just fine? 
Uh, on the other hand, maybe you want to introduce dairy and you go, oh my God, I'm eating dairy. I'm getting congested. My stomach's bloated. I'm getting pimples. I got it. No, that's not good for me. So the idea is to sort of start adding one major thing at a time, giving yourself three days in between. So sort of eat, for example, your, your, your reset diet and then add in gluten and see what happens. How do you feel? Eat it every day for three days, you know, have uh, pasta and have, you know, whatever bread, see what happens. And then start with dairy, dairy, eat, you know, eat it for three days and see how you feel. Uh, and if you notice something is bothering you, that's a clue that you probably should stay off it for a little longer. You might need to stay off it for six months and then your sensitivity can go down. <clears throat> but for some people, they might need to be off it for a long time. If, if, if you eat every time you eat gluten, your joints hurt and you swell up, well, that's probably a sign your body doesn't like it. It's really a learning process of reintroducing food slowly. And it can take a little time. But if you just kind of go, I'm just going to eat pizza and ice cream like on my you know, day 22, you're, you might not know what's going on. You might be reacting to the nightshades or the the gluten or the dairy or whatever. So you don't really know. So you've spent all this time doing this, uh, this um, reset. Why don't you just sort of take the time on the back end to, to sort of slowly ease back and see what really works or doesn't work for you. I think that's, that's advice. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, one thing that I have now done is I no longer in my coffee. Hallelujah. I, <laughs> that's good. Almond milk, everybody. And, yeah. um, and, and I'm really used to not having super sweet coffee in the morning. Uh, oh, somebody said, why didn't I lose one ounce and I stuck to the vegan diet for 21 days? Would you like to talk to that nice person, Mark? Yes, yes. So I, you know, I wrote a book like a long time ago, 2005, and, and I talked about the eight reasons that you, know, you might not lose weight if you are correcting your diet. Because there's a lot of other things that cause weight gain. And so sometimes it's a little bit of a detective job it could be your thyroid's not working. It could be your microbiome is really a mess. It could be that you are having hormonal issues that are affecting you. It could be that you're, you're eating something that maybe is still creating inflammation in your body, even though you're you're a restriction. Uh, it, it, and so there are a lot of reasons. It could be heavy metals. I mean, I had a woman who was a trainer who was eating perfect and working all the time, and she just couldn't lose these 40 pounds. We found out she had heavy metals, and we had to get rid of the mercury from her system and it allowed her metabolism to start working. Because we know that, for example, toxins are what we call obesogens. They're, they're compounds that cause obesity. So maybe your you know, body is just full of these chemicals and, and metals, and that, that can have an effect. So it's a bit of a detective job. <clears throat> I wouldn't lose heart. There's always a way to do it. <clears throat> and some people may need you know, more a more um, <clears throat> specified, personalized approach to eating. Maybe some people may need more carbohydrate or less. Some people may need more protein or less, more fat or less, or maybe they can do keto if they're diabetic. So there's some really personalization that happens. This is just a general approach that works for most people, probably 80% of the time. And then the 20% is like the it's people who just don't, doesn't work for. So, I mean, 10, you know, you lose, you lose, uh, lost, you know, basically a half a pound a day, which is pretty good. Yeah. Um, people want to see your pretty face, Mark. And if you guys have a question, send it to me. I so let, let's talk about fruit because I love fruit and I'd like to incorporate uh, some more fruits into our, my diet. And um, is it okay for us to eat some bananas or like half a banana? Because it makes a world of difference in my smoothie, Mark. It really yeah, of course, happens. of course. <clears throat> so here's the key point. And this is really fascinating knowledge now. We, we know it's, it's important not only what you eat, but when you eat it. So if you eat something starts your sugar at the beginning of the meal or at the end of a meal, it's going to have a profoundly different effect on your blood sugar. And now there are these continuous glucose monitors, and I put one on the other day, and I was just curious to see, you know, I wore it for a few weeks and could see, you know, when I, if I eat, for example, you want to eat a bunch of food on an empty stomach, it'll jack up my blood sugar. But if I have it, you know, at the end of a meal or I have protein and fat, so my like smoothie, I put in protein and fat, and then you get to have your bananas. <laughs> Bob, Bob, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. So you, you got, there's, oh, is that John? Hi, John. How's it going? Good to see you. Mark, John did How did you do? Reset. He what looks, happened? He looks so much better. <laughs> yeah. He, eight he, pounds, he lost like eight pounds because Fantastic. I told him he start, was looking like a beach ball. So I told oh, you that. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a nice compliment. <laughs> How's your marriage going when you say that? <laughs> but, hey, I met him. Feels much better and looks much better. Yeah, well, it's really about the quality of your life. Actually, you know, it's not really about the weight loss for me. It's about how do, how do people feel and what's the quality of your life? Can they do the things that they love, that they care about? Can they, you know, exercise? Can they do the things that they want to do with their family and their friends? And 
you know, be feeling vibrant alive. Like that's what it's about. And uh, when are, you eat crap, you feel like crap. <laughs> all right, that's true. Are you saying that you can't eat, that you shouldn't eat bananas first thing in the morning? No, what I'm saying is that, for example, for example, I make a smoothie in the morning and I put in protein powder, I put in MCT oil, and I, I put in, you know, uh, a banana, a frozen banana. So that's okay because there's a lot of protein and fat and fiber. So if you eat a fruit in the context of protein, fat, and fiber, that's your antidote to sugar. And anything you eat, if, if you're eating, if you want to eat a, something a little more starchy, like if you're eating a sweet potato with dinner, that's okay. But if you have protein and fat, it's way better than just eating an empty stomach. And if you, for example, have a glass of wine before you eat versus at the end of the meal, it has profoundly different effects on your body. That is such a good lesson. So <clears throat> what, what, no matter what people are eating, if it has a lot of natural sugar in it, yeah. always try to counteract that with the fat and a protein. So, for yeah. example, I love honey crisp apples. Is it okay if I eat a honey crisp apple with almond butter? A hundred percent. That's great. Yeah. So that's a good snack. That's the trick. Yeah, that's the whole trick. Is 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 what's we call it the glycemic load of the meal. So the glycemic index is essentially how much a particular food will raise your blood sugar. If you eat a banana on your stomach, how much does it cause your blood sugar to go up? The glycemic load is really how much does the overall combination of foods you're eating raise your blood sugar. So that can, you can eat a banana in the context of, you know, maybe banana with peanut butter, but that would be better than just eating the banana or a banana in a smoothie with fat and protein, much better. Oh, John got me three. Three yeah, but you're using oh, there you go. <laughs> Is he your food stylist? Is he your food stylist, Katie? <laughs> he just got back and his kids are coming over for dinner. John is cooking tonight and we're going to have right. salmon and uh, spinach and what else? Yeah, I got, um, oh, bok, bok choy. Bok nice. Choy. I love bok choy. That's great. That's good. And the one thing, the everybody, um, and then we're going to get to some viewer questions, is, you know, I used to think just have one, maybe two vegetables max. But what I'm starting oh. now is one of the things you taught me, have like three vegetables. So you can have yeah. cauliflower, you can have sauteed spinach, you can bake a cauliflower and have some tahini, and then you can have mushrooms. So in other words, yeah. I, I, I think we're programmed to think like meat, <clears throat> you know, and maybe a salad. Yeah. But I think yeah. protein, and don't make it the star of your plate, and really do three or four vegetables even, yeah. Yeah. they fill you up and it's just so much healthier. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly right. I think we, we are, uh, you know, Dan Barber wrote a book called The Third Plate. Uh, you know, Dan Barber wrote The Third Plate. Essentially, okay. it's about how, you know, the first plate was you have like a big piece of meat, a string bean, and a baked potato. <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> so yeah. and, 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 and the meat would be the, the new The second plate was like, okay, well, let's have like grass fed meat and like still, you know, some better vegetables, but still not great. The third plate is like most of your plate should be like vegetables with a little portion of protein. And I think that's, that's what I do. Last night, for example, I had stir fry, these new mushrooms I'm, I'm enjoying. They're like trumpet mushrooms, and you slice them, and you stir fry them with garlic and olive oil. so good. We had those. We had uh, Chinese uh, long string beans with ginger and mirin. We had uh, uh, Japanese sweet potatoes. And I had a big salad with watercress and, and sunflower sprouts and radishes and jicama and tomatoes and olive oil vinegar dressing. So we had like four, I think four, four or five vegetable dishes. And a couple of we had a side dish of some scallops, which was a side dish. You know, so it, it's really important to eat. And you can eat, the good thing is you can eat as much as you want of that stuff. Like you can just eat as much as you want. So I, I eat till I'm full. I don't restrict my calories. I don't worry about the volume I'm eating. As long as you're eating the right foods, you can eat as much as you want. If you focus on what to eat, you don't have to worry about how much. Which is really, I think, <clears throat> great. You can, there's something called volumetrics where you eat a lot and it makes you full. And so... I, I think that's a really good point. Let me go to some of the questions from my friends who have been doing this with me. Um, oh, I've loved doing I mean, think about it, Katie. You could, you could eat a whole bag of cookies like that. But if someone gave you a bag of avocados, you probably wouldn't finish it. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Although I was eating a lot of avocados on the reset um, with my eggs or with, um, you know, tomatoes. And uh, you're right. They do make you feel much fuller. And they're really good for you. And I think my my skin got a little bit better. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. My so, eczema got totally. better. There you go. That's an important thing. That's you should okay. talk about that because you know a lot of the a lot of skin issues that people suffer from and women suffer from, they're coming from the inside out. 
and you can slather all kinds of creams and lotions and potions on your skin, but unless you deal with the underlying cause of inflammation or irritation in your skin, which is usually your gut, it's usually your diet, it's usually sometimes with, with eczema, it's often food sensitivities, dairy is a big one. So I'd be curious to say you start eating dairy again. Oh, my eczema's back. Then you're going to know, oh, I know if I eat cheese or if I have milk, my eczema comes back. So, but that brings up a point. I want to ask you two quick questions. I promise I'm going to get to every <laughs> question. Um, if you are going to go back to dairy, uh, is it important <clears throat> to have, like, so I always buy the Greek yogurt that's 0%, yeah. right? 0% fat. Yeah. Um, know that you believe when you are eating uh, things, you should eat full fat. Is that yes. correct? Yes, 100%. 100%. Well, first of all, you know, there's a wonderful article written by David Ludwig and Walter Willett from Harvard about milk and health. I know. And it was a, it was, <laughs> yeah, I know you know that. And it was, a, it, was a, it was a New England Journal of Medicine article, which basically deconstructed all our mythology about milk and dairy. And, and one of the things was we should be do, drinking low-fat milk. In fact, the studies show that those who drink low-fat milk gain more weight, <laughs> and particularly kids. And the reason is that they, they don't feel full, so they keep having more and more food. And so fat makes you full. And, and if you eat good fats, it actually is good for you. Now, dairy fat is, it can be a mixed bag for people. It has saturated fat, but it also has been linked to lower risk of diabetes and other things. And in fact, large studies on butter and other saturated fats, uh, Dari Mazafarin from Tufts did a large review of, I, I think, 6 million people years of people consuming butter and dairy. And they found those who consumed dairy had lower risk of diabetes and actually uh, no change in heart disease risk. So the, 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 the thing that I want to focus on with people is quality. So dairy is not dairy is not dairy. Right? If you're eating dairy from a feedlot cow that's pumped full of hormones and antibiotics, that, that, that the milk contains pesticides and all sorts of other things, and it's bred from, made from cows that are um, bred in a way to create this homogenous, like not homogenized milk, but like homogenous um, dairy, that has a, a casing in it called A1 casing, which is super inflammatory, causes digestive issues and all these other issues. If, for example, you eat, you eat dairy from a sheep or goat that's grass-fed, it's A2 casing, which may not cause all the same problems as other people. So I can't eat regular dairy, but I can have sheep or goat. For example, well, what, I get that. What if we want to drink <clears throat> regular dairy? What should we look for when we're, we're buying it? Well, there, there are now companies that make A2 casing milk, which is you can go A2 milk. I think you can Google A2, like ca capital A2 milk, letter two. I mean, the, word, uh, the number two. And, and you can find, for example, Guernsey cows and Jersey cows have um, more of this A2 casing, which isn't as problematic, or heirloom cows. So there's ways to find it. It's a little trickier, but your average dairy, I wouldn't consume. What about what about Greek yogurt? Like I do like Greek yogurt, and I think yeah. it's a substitute for like sour cream and things like that. Sure, um, sure. I mean, you can have Greek yogurt uh, ideally from organic cows, but even organic cows can be A1 casein. They can be they can be milked while they're pregnant, and so on. I, so it's I get Baj or. Uh, uh, so Bonnie, I should get the full fat plain yogurt. Yeah. But I would say is try try the try the sheep yogurts instead. They're really good. Uh, I think I forget the name of the company. I think Old Chatham it was called the Old Chatham Sheep Herding Company. It was right near where I lived in the Berkshires, and uh, it's great. Uh, and it's yummy. It's delicious. It's got good fats. A A2 casein. So there's goat yogurt. I'm I'm uh, here on Maui, and there's this local company that has those little local goats that are running around, and and I'm having the goat yogurt, and that and that's fine. So it really depends on, on uh, what you like, but those, those are great alternatives. By the way, John just made me a snack of, and is this almond butter mold? Yeah, it's almond butter. An almond butter. Isn't that nice of him? That's so nice. You've got a great husband. I do. Sounds like he's, sounds like he's more like a wife, though. He's feeding you, cooking for you. <laughs> that is a very gendered comment on your part. I'm the same. I always say I'll make someone a good wife. Because I know how to iron and cook and clean and do my dishes and cook about, and do everything. How about just like a good partner? Let's take the gender out. Oh, now I lose his sound. Wait, Mark. Just don't cancel. Just don't. Just I, now I, I apologize. I've been corrected. Just don't cancel me. <laughs> well, okay. Um, the other <clears throat> watching women of a certain age, like me. Um, proud of our age, but understanding that happened, you, uh, you, you, you're producing much less, if any, estrogen, and losing a lot of muscle mass. So, mm. ergo, you get a lot of belly fat, and mm. you, um, 
fat replaces some of the muscle. So talk about that and what we can do because I never had a gut until like a couple of years ago. And now I do and it's very depressing. But didn't it go away when you did the reset? It did. It went away. Yeah. I mean, not yeah. Well, you maybe need another 21 days. <laughs> 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 but but uh, sometimes it takes a little longer. But the key here is that you can reverse biological age at any age. And I, and I see this over and over. And I've seen it myself. Like I, I was looking at pictures of me when I was in my 30s and now I'm 61 and my body is way better and in much better shape and way more muscle because I know more. I was a vegetarian and vegan back then. I was sort of a scrawny kid. And now, and now I've learned how to eat to actually build and maintain muscle. And it, it really comes down to two things. Um, when we age, if we do nothing, there's this entropy where our, our muscle will decline and we'll lose and lose more muscle. And so if you could be 65 and be the same weight as you were when you were 25, but be twice as fat, you essentially have like ribeye marbled muscle. And that is bad for you because it creates inflammation, it creates diabetes, cardiometabolic disease, dementia. It's really bad at that. And, it, and it's the thing that lends people up in the nursing home. It's not, it's not often disease. It's that they can't tie your shoes. They can't get up out of a chair. Like just be able to stand up, you know, like without actually pushing or holding on. That's a key. There you go. You can do it. <laughs> and, and then if you can't do that, that's why people end up in the nursing home. So the key to keeping your muscle is two things. One is cutting out foods that cause you to marble your muscle, which is basically sugar and starch, right? Sugar and starch, basically think of them as causing like marbled fatty muscle and losing muscle. Uh, okay. pro and protein and fat actually help. Uh, and David literally done a lot of these studies where he showed that basically using high fat diets, very low carbohydrate diets actually causes muscle to build, whereas eating the starch causes the opposite. And the other thing is, is protein. Uh, as we age, we need more protein and we need high quality protein. And it's hard to get high quality protein from plants. You can, but often you need extra protein powders. You need to jack up the amounts. You need to have fortified proteins with the right kind of amino acids that help to build muscle. So all the branched chain amino acids that are so key for muscle building are more predominant in animal proteins. So you need a lot less than you need like cups and cups of beans to equal like a small palm-sized piece of fish or chicken. The okay. key is to have protein with every meal and, and actually increase your protein as you age. How much muscle mass <laughs> every year after the age of 60? It really depends. Like I'm putting on muscle mass and I'm after the age of 60. So I, I'm. But I thought you quoted something in an well, earlier you... <laughs> about the average person losing a certain amount of muscle. Yeah. I mean, it, it depends on what you're doing and your activity and your diet, but you can lose, you know, significant amounts of muscle every year. And, but you don't have to, that's the key. Like I'm, I'm 61 and I'm planning to train for the centenary Olympics. And I'm going to be more fit and muscular at 70 than I am at 60. And I'm, I'm committed to it. And it's possible. You have to work harder at it, but it's possible. The body has that capacity. Okay. Um, John has a question. Molnar, you can come over and join mm -hmm. us. Uh, come on, John. You know, because in the morning, I was doing the intermittent fasting. And Hi. I, hey, hey, Mark. I was doing your intermittent fasting and then your reset. And I was... You know, when I the first thing I had around eleven o'clock in the morning would be a protein shake, and we bought some mm. very high thought organic protein powder. They didn't like the taste of it. I didn't bother. If there was a protein powder that you recommended, and is that a good way to start the day? You know, sort of turn yeah. off the <clears throat> yeah. hours and then. I particularly like it. I mean, I I actually was you know so sort of disgusted with a lot of the protein shakes out there, made from you know pork all ingredients or sweetened or, you know, just not great. And so I actually created something called the Peak and Shake, which is essentially protein, fat, and fiber. So it has pumpkin seed protein. It has uh, a pea pro organic pea protein and, and grass-fed collagen protein, as well as MCT oil and fiber from uh, called acacia fiber, which is great for your microbiome. And I, it tastes great. I love it. Everybody seems to love it. Uh, and you can mix that with frozen food. You can put other things in there, macadamia nut milk. You can put in more protein if you want, like nut butters. And I, I just love that for breakfast. Where do you get it? Where do you get the... the uh, you can get it on my, on my website, getpharmacy.com. That's G-E-T-F-A-R-M-A-C-Y. Because food is medicine, that's why I say pharmacy. Okay, I'm going to try that. But the MCT oil, I didn't have that. I had sort of a, you know, it sort of didn't... It had it sort can of cause, throat a little bit. Is that ever happened? Or you uh, can you, I wonder if you're allergic to coconut. I mean, it could potentially. Usually it's pretty good. The, the, in the shake, you don't really notice it much. because It's dried MCT oil. 
Or in coffee. And, coffee. Yeah, the coffee is, yeah, the coffee, you can use it. But it's, see, see what happens when you try the shake, or if it really bothers you, you don't have to take it. Okay, thanks. Okay, sure. so Mark, <clears throat> uh, someone wants to know um, if they can continue on the reset. Um, how many more weeks can I follow the plan? She said she's loving it, and she's been feeling really good since she started it. I don't even know if this is start. I, I can't tell, but. Yeah. I mean, you can do it. You can do it forever. I mean, you can do it forever. I mean, I pretty much eat that way. Uh, we had a, a patient at Cleveland Clinic who was type 2 diabetic, massively overweight. Her body mass index was 43. Uh, she had heart failure, diabetes on insulin. Kidneys were starting to fail. Liver was starting to fail. High blood pressure. Had stents put in, multiple medications. She, her copay was 20 grand a year. Within three days of changing her diet, she was off insulin. Within three months, she was off all her medications and lost 43 pounds. And a year, she lost 116 pounds. So she did it for a year to reverse all of these conditions. And you just That's don't see this. She was on her way to a heart transplant and a kidney transplant and normalized. And you just don't see that with traditional uh, drugs because they're not as powerful as food. When you deliberate, deliberate about understanding how to use food as medicine, which is the whole point of the vegan diet, it literally is, is remarkable. Someone else... <laughs> They've been following the Pegan Reset 100%. This is similar to an earlier question, but not lose much weight. So is there a way where they could be alter something or could, could someone doing this be doing something a little bit wrong? It's possible. There may be, you know, there may be certain foods that are still reacting to that are in there, or there may be just other factors that are underlying it. There may be hormonal issues. There may be uh, mitochondrial issues. There may be toxins. There may be nutritional deficiencies, there may be gut issues. So part of the job of a functional medicine doctor is the detective that will sort of figure out when things aren't going the way you expect, what to do. And just as a, you know, it's hard to determine what's going on with each individual, but I think that's, uh, you know, that, that's an important thing to think about. What are those other things that could be uh, doing that? And, I, and I'm happy to like, I think I can pull it up. I can share like the, with your audience, I'll send you the article I wrote about how, what are the eight things that you have to think about if you're not losing weight? Okay, will you, will you, can we, I'd love to put that in our newsletter. Yeah, I'll see if I can find it. I wrote a long time ago, but I'll, 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 I'll see if I can find Would it. surface that, but sign yeah, up yeah. for Wake Up Call, everybody, at katiekirk.com, and we'll put that article in. on. Let's do it on Saturday. I'll tell Amanda, who helps us with our Saturday newsletter. She's kind of the in charge of it. Okay, um, here's some more questions. Uh, I, after the reset period, what changes can be made? Adding more protein, perhaps, but what else? Any other changes? I mean, I think people can start to sort of be flexible. The whole idea is is not to be restricted. The whole idea is how do you get your system to be resilient, to have metabolic, what we call metabolic degrees of freedom or metabolic flexibility, so that if you have a cookie, it's not going to throw you off. It's not going to cause your blood sugar to go through the roof. So how do you become more fit and resilient metabolically? And when you eat this way for a long period of time, you can do that. And then you can, you know, like I have as one of the principles, treat sugar as a recreational drug where you can enjoy treats from time to time. So like I'm here in Maui and they had this vegan macadamia nut ice cream. And I was like, oh, this is really good. Someone brought it I, over. I'm like, okay. Your I blood have it. Yeah, it did uh, spike. Like it did spike. But, you know, it spiked. But I, I don't have it every night and I had it as a treat. So you don't have to be super restrictive. Just listen to your body. But otherwise, if I, had, if I had regular ice cream, I know I would develop gas and bloating and I'd probably get pimples and ingestion. But, I, you know, so I kind of pick what I'm doing. And I think that's the other principle people should remember is whatever you're eating, whatever you add back, it just should be real food, right? Just eat real food. I will never eat a Twinkie, right? Will I have a cake that's made at home from scratch from real ingredients? Absolutely. Will I have an upgraded cake that's even better with, for example, protein, and fat, for example, almond flour, coconut flour, avocado oil, like, sure. Like, and maybe, you know, sweetened with monk fruit or a little bit of uh, honey or maple syrup, okay. But I'm not gonna eat something that's coming from a factory that's full of things that aren't even actually food. Okay, some people are asking about <clears throat> oatmeal. I think for people, <clears throat> I love eggs, but I don't wanna have them every single day for breakfast. So sometimes I had a smoothie with spinach and berries and uh, yeah. almond butter and I, I like the collagen powder because I don't like the way protein powder tastes personally yeah, sure. of the sure. ones. Um, but if you did steel cut oatmeal, is that something uh, if we put nuts on it for protein? Yeah, um, for sure. For sure. So, so I think, you know, when you look at that, it depends on you, right? If you are generally healthy, fine. If you're active and exercising, fine. If you're not gluten sensitive, fine. 
But if you're like most Americans, which are 88% are metabolically unhealthy, that's like 12% of you can probably tolerate oatmeal. <laughs> the other 88%, you know, there's, there's a real problem. And when you look at the data, David did a study, David Ludwig, where he, he took overweight kids and he gave them regular oatmeal, still cut oats or an omelet for breakfast, identical calories. So calories were identical. And then he locked them in a room and he put an IV in and checked their blood every hour. And what he found was that kids who ate the oatmeal were hungrier all day long. They ate 81% more food all day. Even the steel coats, they ate over 50% more food than the people at the omelet. And their blood sugar spiked, their adrenaline spiked, their insulin spiked. So it was like, it was almost like their cortisol spiked. It was almost like the, the eating the oatmeal was a stress to the body. So mm. if you eat, if you eat steel coats, yeah. But if you add fat to it and you add protein to it, you know, it's probably better than just having it straight. Like I said, the glycemic load matters. Uh, so for some people, it's fine. Uh, but I, I think as, I think oatmeal is definitely not, not necessarily the best breakfast. Protein and fat is going to set you up for the day so you're not hungry and craving food all the time. Maybe once in a while. Like nuts or, or peanut butter or something yeah. in there. Yeah. But I get it. Okay. Somebody asked... Um, what about air frying? Um, is it does that destroy the value of the food we're eating? Um, I don't think it probably does, but it, you know, depends on the food and the high temperature and so forth. So probably for potatoes, probably it'll fine, but for, for for broccoli, I don't know what it does. I actually not I'm not an expert in air frying, so I, I think it's probably better than obviously deep frying. <laughs> yeah, I think I it's know. okay. I I think it's okay. <clears throat> A lot of people have emailed saying that, okay, TMI everyone, but hey, a lot of people say they're constipated or bloated. Um, talk yeah. about that, what they can do if they're not, um, if, if this is making them not as regular as they'd like. Um, so I think that, that uh, you know, being regular is really important and so key to your health. And if you're not, it means one of two things, whether you're, you're not drinking enough water or not having enough fiber, or maybe you're low in magnesium. So upping your water intake, making sure you're eating more fiber. And you can have flax seeds, chia seeds, all kinds of, you know, nuts and seeds are great fibers. Um, and, and then actually making sure that you're having enough magnesium because 45% of Americans are deficient in magnesium, which can make you have all sorts of other symptoms besides constipation, muscle cramps, headaches, irritability. So getting magnesium citrate really helps. And if you're, if you're doing this diet and you're not pooping, you're in trouble. So that's really important to poop. <laughs> you can get and powdered magnesium and mix it in water too, which helps you sleep and helps your digestive system, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I know you've got to go. Um, we've been notified by your assistant. I have to go too, but you know what, Mark? Um, why don't we keep talking? And I'm, can... I'm down. We can do this all regularly. Wait, not, I'm happy not to. now, but maybe we can <clears throat> get more questions. Maybe yeah. you You'll, I know we're wrapping up. They're all telling me to wrap. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But but maybe you could at some point uh, in our newsletter, we'll put a bunch of questions in a couple of weeks um, for people who are still really working hard. And can I just say I'm really proud of everybody who did this. Um, and I did. I actually was very inspired by everyone following the plan. It made me stay honest and made me stay on it. So um, I, I wish we could get to more questions. Oh, people love your protein powder. And, uh, and I think that's it. But thanks, Mark, for-, for Of course. Uh, thank you for doing it. I'm glad you did it. And I'm glad you feel benefits. And I'm glad your arthritis is better, your eczema is better, and you lose weight and you feel better. Like, that's the whole point. Yeah, I do feel much better. I have to say. It's inspiring me, except for that one little donut and in and out burger day. It's <laughs> eat better every day yeah, and yeah and really, but by the way and, and you don't have to answer this now but sometimes this is very expensive like organic beef <clears throat> and, or, yeah. and, and i have heard from some of my followers when you're on a budget this is not an easy yeah meal. well I, I think there is a chapter in the in the book uh one of the principles is how to eat you know in a way that's affordable and it takes a little more effort but it's really possible. And I think when you, when you don't have to have the most expensive everything, but just eating real food is the first principle, you know, eating real food. And, and there's a good guide from the environmental working groups called Good Food on a Tight Budget, which guides you on which foods to choose that are the least expensive and the most nutritious and good for you and the planet in your wallet. So it's doable. It just takes a little more, you know, thinking. I'm going to see if we can publish that too. Can you send me the link to that? Sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. We'll put that in the 
newsletter as well. Okay, everybody. Mark, big kiss. Thanks, Katie. Bye. Bye. Baby. I'll talk to you soon. See you soon. Okay, bye. bye.